Elite athletes sometimes talk about the one percenters, the little things that you can do that add up to making a big difference in your bid to tackle the competition. Now that's the approach that Mazda has taken with this, the 2016 Mazda 3. The Mazda 3 has had a handful of minor tweaks. The front and rear have subtly reprofiled bumpers as well as a redesigned front grille, though you'll be doing well to pick it up from last year's version. Premium models now have a one-touch electronic handbrake, a full-colour heads-up display and redesigned 18-inch wheels. There are electronic folding mirrors, a new steering wheel and the CD player has been ditched in favour of a more convenient place to put USB charging points. Importantly, Mazda used to offer the car with a $1,500 safety pack, but those features are now standard on most of the models across the range, which are now around $500 dearer. The basic Mazda 3 Neo misses out on the full safety pack, but it does get autonomous emergency braking as standard for the same price, $20,490. As far as updates go, this really isn't a massive one. You've got the same engines as before. You've got essentially very similar styling and the interior layout is pretty much as it was before. But this is Mazda doing little things. It's doing what athletes call the one percenters, getting those right in order to get the perfect game. Now some of the changes are really quite cool. We definitely like to see autonomous emergency braking, things like that as standard in cars. And it's interesting too that the CD player is coming out. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that a CD player as a standard feature was a really big selling point in a car, and for Mazda to just rip those out and put in automatic braking instead, it's pretty cool. It's a bit of a sign of the times as far as where motoring is today. So we have the same engines as before. The car that I'm driving right now has the two litre motor paired with a six speed automatic transmission, and it's a pretty inoffensive thing, you know? It does a good job of just what people will ask the car to do. Going from A to B and the occasional longer distance cruise, uh, if you want more power, there's the 2.5 litre one, which of course uses a little bit more fuel as well. One of the selling points for this car is what Mazda calls G-Vectoring Control, which is a funny name and it's an interesting feature that basically doesn't add any new hardware to the car. Instead, what Mazda has done is take existing sensors that are part of the stability control system and things like that and use those in tandem with the engine to basically create a smoother driving experience. Now, the way it works is quite interesting. If you're on steady throttle, as I am now, tip into a corner, what it will do is slightly reduce the amount of torque that you're using to put just a little bit more weight over the front wheels to give them more grip and to make the cornering experience a little bit smoother. It does the same thing as you're driving along as well. It'll put more weight on the rear axle by slightly giving it more power without you flexing your foot. It's basically making tiny little adjustments on the throttle to give you a smoother ride. Now, in isolation, you don't really notice the changes that much. But driving the cars back to back, we found that we're making fewer little adjustments on the steering in the new car. Mazda reckons that that makes it more effortless car to drive, basically reducing fatigue and making the car a more pleasant proposition for longer drives. It's an interesting thought. Now, no other car company has that technology at the moment. Um, it'll be really interesting to see whether anybody else picks it up. Out on the road, the new Mazda 3 drives pretty much exactly like the old Mazda 3, which is to say that it is not a bad car at all. It's got an excellent balance between ride and handling and it's a pretty accurate thing to point. You tip it into a corner and you feel confident knowing exactly where the car is going to go. The big bugbear for Mazda recently has been noise, vibration and harshness. Essentially there's been too much noise in the cabin of its popular cars like the Mazda 2 and the Mazda 3. Now Mazda says it's done a little bit to address this in this, but they haven't really sorted it. I drove the cars back to back on our smooth tarmac loop here and found very little difference between the two in terms of noise. Your ears might be different, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not a really big change and essentially it's probably going to stay on as a bit of a weak point for the brand. We know that it's going to do more to address it in other models, such as the CX-9, which is really one of the quietest cars in its class, but the Mazda 3 is probably not something that you'd say that about. Don't be upset if you bought a Mazda 3 in the last couple of months. This is not a major update, and it didn't need to be. There's not much wrong with the current Mazda 3. Instead, it's a group of little changes that help this car retain its appeal as one of the best small cars on the road today. Little one percenters that can make all the difference.